What's up guys, we just woke up and I'm gonna take you through a quick day being, you know, just show you an overview of the meals. First things first, hydrate with some high quality water. By far the most important thing to do is stay hydrated because your gut motility is dependent on hydration. So if you want things to keep moving, if you want your body to be metabolically efficient and detox in general, you need to be as hydrated as possible. And in the morning, after you know, you're know you sleeping all night, that's when you're going to be the least hydrated. So drink a ton of water in the morning. Very important. If you don't get as much the rest of the day, it's not as big of a deal, but morning is important. It's actually a very beautiful fall day. I'm going to have to check the weather because I might just lay out and get some sun. So I'm going to have to figure out what my work schedule is going to be today. So now I'll do like 30 minutes of work on my computer and then make breakfast. Yeah, the fall weather is really perfect for tanning because... You know, regardless of what you do outside, you're not gonna like sweat that much because it's really, really nice and cool. Like 55, 60 degrees is perfect. And the sky looks pretty clear. All right, guys, so here is our breakfast. We got the Iberico breakfast sausage from Frankie's Strange Meat, some organic oat flour pancakes, and we have our honey crisp apple for dessert, organic maple syrup to go on the pancakes. Supplement-wise, we're taking masticum, macronutrient enzymes and some zinc and of course some glass bottle mineral water to wash it down my water kefir isn't ready and i forgot to bring kefir grains home uh, that's why we're taking the enzymes and i also forgot to bring home uh, some breakfast sausage i just had one left so normally i'd have two sausages for breakfast and i normally keep my cakes and my sausage separate but today i guess they're together whatever it's 2023 times are tough Look at the temperature on that pork sausage, Master Chef, huh? That's like, that's like perfect for these pork sausages. You don't really want any red or raw in there, uh, which I like on the pork tenderloin, but on the sausage, you kind of want it to be cooked, but still, you know, a little moist and rare on the inside. So that's our high quality protein, amino acids, all that stuff, some minerals. The pancakes are just the bulk starch of the meal, some fiber in the oats there to help detox the liver. Uh, we have the organic pancake mix available now on frankiesrangefoods.com. And then I mix that with equal parts organic oats. I might try the recipe with organic oat flour and then I'll let you guys know. But either way, we're doing that recipe this weekend or next weekend. The organic maple syrup is also available on frankiesrangefoods.com. Whole honey crisp apples. We got a lot of stuff on frankiesrangefoods.com. So definitely check it out, guys. That's going to be dessert. Some more volume, fiber, water. I'm probably just going to eat like two or three of these pieces and then save the rest for lunch. And the masticum to kind of wash the meal down, keep the gut motility going. And then the macronutrient enzymes help digest the food. And the zinc is our current lowest uh, mineral that we're taking. Everything else seems to be okay in check. And then we got the Fuji glass bottle mineral water. So consistent with every meal, guys, we have a nice balance of protein, starch, and fiber. Of course, we're you know, putting a lot of effort into the meals to make them taste good. And uh, then we have the gut health management, which in this case is the masticum and the macronutrient enzymes. And the reason I always need to take something with the meal, like a lot of people are like, oh, Frank, you gotta take mastic or probiotics with every meal, you're not actually healthy. Well, when your liver's detoxing, there's a lot of negative things coming out that promote dysbiosis. You know, the gut bacteria loves toxic bile, especially candida. So until the liver is fully healed, which could take another who knows how many years, you need to be consistent with the routine. Yeah, I could deviate days here and there, but it's better overall to be consistent and take small amounts of things to manage it as opposed to go completely out of whack crazy and then have to do some uh, some ridiculous strict stuff and not feel so good to fix it. And so it does look really nice outside. Uh, so I think we're gonna lay out from like 11 to two or three, which is peak UVB. And it's 55 degrees, which is perfect for tanning. 55 degrees is literally perfect weather because you won't sweat. I do have a few hours of workouts supposed to do with Frankie's syringe meat, but it can kind of wait for tomorrow and I can still just go down there at two or three o'clock and just do the things I need to do. And you know, with how the weather's been this summer and the lack of sun, I'm, I'm really prioritizing, hey, if, you know, if it's nice outside, get a few hours of sun and then do everything else. You know, if it was just sunny most of the summer and I was getting a ton of it and I would, I, I would probably even take days off and not try to tan every day. But 
this is a little different. So we're gonna enjoy breakfast, get a few hours of sun, probably go down to work, come back, and we'll show you guys lunch. Only annoying thing is, guys, I do have to put sunscreen on the tattoo portion, which usually takes me five or ten minutes. I got these necklaces uh, as a gift last year, and <laughs> they're the chains are short, so they're annoying to take off. So I don't know what I'm gonna do when I go out and tan. Yeah, so every time before I tan, <laughs> I do like a little artwork of sunscreen on my chest. Honestly, I don't know if I should just like forget it and then get the tattoo touched up every few years, save myself the headache of doing this. Obviously, if I like was at the beach or something, I wouldn't spend the time doing this. I would just let it go. But if I'm going to be like direct UVB sunlight for like three hours, I'm going to do this. It takes like 10 minutes. And the, the uh, length of these chains is, is shorter. I used to be able to just pull the chains off over my head and then put them back on easily. But these, I'm not too good with the clasp on them. So I usually just leave them like this when I go out to tan, but whatever. Bro, this is to prove to you guys that I can eat pancakes and a loaf of bread every day and still be ripped out of my mind. And I only work out like 15 minutes a day. Yeah, so I was tanning out here naked because I'm like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and one day, some hunters were walking through the woods like right across on the neighbor's property, which kind of sketched me out, but I don't really care. I should still be fine out here. The uh, the sky is looking a little cloudy, especially over there, which I'm not too happy about. Because if, if the sun looked like that, I would just go to work. But it doesn't. There's still some UVB. It's like 55 degrees outside, and in the sun, you're actually still pretty warm. Now, if it was breezy, you know, that might be an issue. And uh, once it gets like, I would say 45 or below, if it's re if, even if it's 45, if it's really sunny and there's no wind, you're probably good. But as soon as it gets windy and like below 45, that's when it's like, okay, it's a, a little too cold. To Maybe not even. Maybe not even. If, if there's no wind and it's sunny, it can be really cold and you can still go outside and tan just fine. Yeah, so I'm just going to lay out and get some sun. Uh, we do have the sunscreen available on FrankiesNaturals.com as well as the bug spray, which I actually have over here. And since it got cooler the past two weeks, I don't really need the bug spray. But <laughs> about a month ago, I was spraying everything. I was spraying everything. So yeah, granted, no trails get sprayed in the air. And the clouds don't move too much. We should get a few hours of sun, but maybe not. Maybe, you know, if the sky gets cloudy, then I just go down to work early. So whatever. Outside of the tanning, there's two main things I'm mindful of when I'm out here. One, am I grounded? You know, so sometimes I'll hang my feet off the lounge chair. Because, you know, I'm not sure if, if this metal here is actually grounded. I don't know. I might actually buy, I don't know, stainless steel lounge chair or something. Or you could, like, stick something in the ground and hold on to it. Or even use a grounding setup out here, which is a little crazy. Well, one thing I found out was that touching a tree is not actually grounding. Like, if you just touch the wood on the tree, you're not really grounded. You know, you got to be, like, barefoot or your hands touching the grass. And another thing is, it's much better to stand up for, like, health and gut motility than it is to lie down in the lounge chair. So what I'll do, you know, I'll get up, I'll walk around, I'll do some body weight exercises in the sun to tan because... I could stand like this, my back facing the sun, and tan my back, and then I could turn around and stand facing the sun, and then tan the front part of my body, because just for gut motility and digestion, especially after I just ate, it's better to be standing up, and then you can move around for some blood flow and that type of stuff, too, so. I mean, yeah, obviously, if I could just pass out and lay down in the sun, I like doing that, too, but just some things to be mindful of, because I gotta go inside and get some water, too. And you want to just be mindful of, you know, staying hydrated, being grounded, and uh, standing up, keeping the gut motility good. You know, because if you start getting, you know, lightheaded, or a headache, or you don't feel good, then it's probably one of those three things. You either need to ground, you need to hydrate and drink some water, or you need to stand up and, and get the gut motility and lymph fluid flowing. And uh, in addition to that, there might be radiation EMF. Like I'm in the woods here, so I, I know there's no radiation, but usually in a, in a town or city, the radiation is a factor. And uh, the way to counter the radiation thing would be, if you're grounded, you might not get a headache. I think that's what the only advice I have. If you eat a meal before tanning, 
and you're grounded most of the tanning session, even if you're like in New York City in the park and the EMF is high, you, sh you shouldn't get a headache. At least that's my experience, but I wouldn't do it for more than uh, a, a few hours in that type of environment. Just try to focus on getting out there and peak UVB. So yeah, like a good hour of sun and I don't know if they sprayed something, I wasn't paying attention, but sun's kind of blocked now. Like you could stay out still and, and get some benefits, but like my complexion's a little dark so if there's clouds out in like like this partial cloud coverage at the end of september it's not really worth it if it was still like august and there was partial cloud coverage like this maybe it's okay but pretty cloudy and there's even clouds right over the sun right now so like if my vitamin d was low i might stay outside but if anything my levels are too high so the main reason i'm tanning is to like recycle the skin and if the UV isn't really intense, it's, it's not going to be enough to damage and burn uh, the skin. So it's not really, there's no real reason for me to be outside from a health perspective right now. Because my, again, my vitamin D levels are too high, if anything. And the sun isn't strong enough to stimulate the skin recycling. I'm better off literally just hop. If I hopped in that tanning bed with those bulbs for 10 minutes, it would be more than a few hours in that sun right now. But if it clears up at 3 or 4 p.m., and the sun's a little lower in the sky, that would maybe be worth an hour. So I just got home from work. Uh, first thing I did was wash my hands. And anytime I get home from like interacting with other people, I always do uh, an iodine nasal flush. You guys have seen this a lot at this point. So we have the iodine from organsupplements.com. I just pour a bit in my mineral water. And then, I just kind of hold it there and make sure that it really fills up the nasal cavity. I do this pretty much every single day at this point. Because that nasal cavity area is the first point where anything enters your body. So if you do that right when you get home from work or school or whatever, you're basically never gonna get sick and you should never notice any issues. So for lunch, guys, we got the beef and barley stew on Frankie's syringe meat. So I didn't have to do any prep. I just uh, threw this in some hot water at work, and then I brought it home so it's nice and thawed out. And we have some sourdough bread uh, that we made yesterday. So we're just going to warm the soup up in the pan and then show you guys the meal. So pretty simple lunch, guys. We got our beef and barley stew. You guys can see the ingredients on frankiesyringemeat.com. And then just homemade organic sourdough bread. Nice balance of protein in the stew. This is made with a collagen bone broth. So all the liquid in here is incredibly high in amino acids and protein. Even though, you know, there's just an average amount of stew meat in here, all the liquid is collagen protein. So it's still a very high protein meal. And this is our kind of starch uh, to help soak things up in that toxic bile that comes out of the liver every meal. So nice peasant food, as you guys would refer to. And we got some uh, more leftover apples from the previous meal. We're just going to do some mastigum with this meal and some water. Uh, no supplements with this meal. Although we're just doing a quick day of eating, I will try the barley stew on camera for you guys. Ugh. What do the kids say now? It slaps. I would say it's slamming. Very good, very good. It's a little over seasoned, a little too much uh, bay leaf, but it's delicious. Really good. I've been pounding this stew for like the last three days. I really, really like it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy that on Frankie's Strange Meat. And then the next batch is going to be even better. This was like a minimally inflammatory batch where I didn't want to put wine in it. I didn't put any like cream or anything. But the next time we do the soup, I'm going to put wine. I'm going to... Put a little cream in it and i might add a little more salt and stuff but right now this just as is amazing it's really good you know what i don't even i don't think it's really even over seasoned i think it just needs some cream or something to cut through all the flavor in there but it's really delicious i hope you guys enjoy it and um we'll also have 
just a plain beef stew available soon. Just collagen broth and beef, no ingredients in it. Uh, but I'm gonna enjoy my lunch, guys, and we will see you for dinner. Well, finally got a grill set up, so hopefully next day of eating, you guys get to see it. 100 bucks, not a bad deal. So I set up this cheap tent in my backyard in the grill area. I have zero confidence in this thing staying up in any sort of wind. If I take like five gallon buckets and fill them with concrete and put the bottom of the poles in those buckets, is this okay like just to leave up like this? I figured this was like the cheapest solution, you know, $100 tent, put it over the grill area, and then I guess, you know, these steaks are like nothing, but I'm guessing the cheapest way to do it would be get some five gallon buckets, pour concrete in them, and then just stick the bottoms in there. I mean, it's not gonna look good, but uh, <laughs> nothing in this house looks good. Yeah, I didn't work as much today, so I finally had a little time to do some stuff around the house, mainly get that tent set up. I did some, the grill assembly, and I still have, I need another day where like, I can just get everything away and clean, let alone make improvements. Some of you guys were complaining that I need to fix the drywall on the, in, in my workout video. Dude, I'm not sanding a wall. I'm not sanding, I'm not sanding that room for two hours straight and then vacuuming up. It's gonna take longer than that. Then I gotta vacuum up the dust and the mess. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. I wish I had it done before I put the equipment in there. So we're back with our typical dinner. To the average person, this looks like some noodles with white sauce. You know, what is this guy bragging about fettuccine Alfredo? No, these are organic udon noodles made from white wheat. You know, it's hard red winter wheat and then they hull it so the wheat's white, it's minimally inflammatory. Mixed with white bean puree. Uh, in the puree this week, I added some cod and pork. Pretty odd mixture of protein and blended it all together, but it actually tastes okay. Definitely gonna have to alter that next time. Yeah, you could just take either ground iberico pork, brown it in the pan and blend it in, or cod, not both. I don't know what I was thinking. I ran out of uh, cod, forgot to bring enough home. And I actually mixed that with a little bit of a homemade cream of mushroom soup. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that a bit next week. But it's basically a lot of starch noodles. Again, the theme of soaking the bile out of the liver. You need grains. And then mixing that with some fiber in the white bean puree. And the mushroom, uh, cream of mushroom soup is just some added flavor, maybe a little more fiber and gut motility, but I've been making way too much food. I'll probably eat only half of this. Then we got the apple, what was left over from breakfast and lunch, and then we're just going to have some masticum with the meal. So believe it or not, there's a lot of protein in this because that collagen broth we use in the white bean puree, and there's a lot of collagen broth in the cream of mushroom soup. So even if we only have maybe you know, three to four ounces of pork and cod in here, not even, it's probably another three to four ounces of collagen broth. So a lot of amino acids makes a huge difference. But that's it for this day of eating. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and are enjoying all of the high quality organic natural products, affordable as well. We have on frankiestrangemeat.com and frankiestrangefoods.com. Always doing new stuff for you guys. Everything is excellent. And uh, we can only, I guess, improve more till I completely lose my mind and I'm just sleeping in my warehouse. Anyway, guys, check out franktestefano.com for all of my interesting and unique businesses. If you'd like to support me further outside of that, just drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. I, want, I don't think I've trash talked at all today, so I, I won't at the end of the video. I was gonna say something, but I won't. See you guys soon.